Welcome to the Husky Huddle powered by Jets Pizza. My name is Ryan Antonucci, and today we're going to be meeting some of the players on our boys wrestling team. Uh, when we come back for break, we're going to meet Max Muhammadalev and Frank Tago. Welcome back to the Husky Huddle. Joining us now in the studio is Max Mihamalev and Frank Tego. All right, guys, how are we doing today? All right. All right, so what are your goals for this upcoming season? We'll start with you, Max. You know, I've been working very hard. I'm trying to get that state championship. Last year I got third, and I'm really focused on winning it this year. What about you, Frank? Uh, for me, you know, I'm gonna really working towards placing this year. Uh, last year I was really focused, like nobody really knew who I was and this year, you know, more people are, know who I am. So I'm really hoping to just get on that podium this year at State. Uh -huh. And Max, you were on the podium last year, am I right? So yeah. what was that experience like for you? You know, it was nice. Uh, I made the semis and I ended up with third. Uh, it's kind of sad too, because I was a two-time semifinalist. So it's kind of hard losing in the semis, battling back. but. I battled back and got third. So I'm not wrong in saying that last year you guys had two state podium finishers. Is that yeah. correct? So yes. how do you think you guys are going to be able to replicate that this year? And if so, with who? I think we have uh, some solid talent. I think, especially our seniors, I think, honestly, all of them can place. So I think if we're focused, I think we can get at least four placers. Right. Definitely. Uh, it's really just a matter of getting everyone on the same sort of mindset that you know we can't like all of our seniors all the guys in the lineup they can make state and let's say half those guys can place at state it's just a matter of getting those guys minds right and you know working towards that goal i think i think we could get a lot of guys to place this year if we really work at it and so you guys had lost some seniors last year, right? Like, who were yeah. those big senior losses, and how you look to replace those roles? We'll start with you, Frank. I'd say one of the one of the biggest ones that I feel like we don't really think about a lot is Gus Damon, who really stepped up at heavyweight for us. Uh, you know, he was a senior; he didn't have to wrestle, but he did it for the team, and he was a great heavyweight. You know, he fought. But uh, we have Harrison Lacaze coming in, and he's been training at Izzy with us. He's been you know, just grinding it out. And, you know, he's really, he's really improving. So I do think that, uh, that he, he's going to step up for us this year and really make a difference because that's one of the weights where, you know, you, you don't always have a, a big guy like that to fight for you. But I think, I think he'll come through on that. And you reference Izzy, that's a club program, right? Yes, for yes, that, yes, that's, a, that's the club program that our team most of our team goes to. Okay. And so what about you, Max? What seniors yeah. did we lose? And how you know, you we lost a lot. a lot. Most influential, I'd say probably Cambria. He mm -hmm. was d definitely our team leader last year, led our warm-ups and everything. And although I, he tried hard to uh, get our team together. Uh -huh. And I also have to give credit to uh, Hanson, yeah. Nolan, Tim, all those seniors who didn't have to fight, but they fought for us. And you could always count on them to show up to practice. So as individuals, what do you guys look to improve on for yourselves and your own game for next year? We'll start with you, Max. You know, uh, I like to get more solid in my technique, uh, just controlling matches better. Uh, and especially during duels or bonus points where you're trying to get, you're trying to win by pin. You're not trying to win by points. So I'm trying to get as many pins as possible. Right. I'd say my biggest thing as well is, uh, it's really dialing in my technique. I already sort of have the power. It's just a matter of fine tuning uh, that technique, you know, place this hand here. It's all those little details that really add up and make a huge difference. So I'd say that's going to be my main focus this year. So I understand that wrestling is a team sport, but also it's an individual sport. You're competing for yourself individually, but you're also competing for your team. 
in what ways does it make it an individual and team sport, and how do you combat that as you're competing? We'll start with you, Max. Well, it's very individual. It's always one versus one. It's never you're never relying on someone else to fix your mistakes. But especially on a high school team, it's also very there's a very big team aspect, and it's important to keep momentum in a dual meet and to just work together as a team, improve at, during practice, have good partners. The team aspect really shines in wrestling as well as individual. Okay, all right, thank you, Frank. Yeah, I'd say uh, that team aspect is stepping on the mat, knowing the guy's better than you and you might lose the match, but just stepping on that, might, that, on that mat, uh, keeping in mind like, hey, I'm not gonna give up bonus points, I have a team. Uh, that's behind me like I, I can't I just can't give up bonus points I can't let my team down so really it really helps you fight to just not get pinned not get majored not get tacked all that all right sounds good how have you guys been preparing this off season for this upcoming year we'll start with you Frank uh so just pra practice every day nothing nothing really changes like in the off season you're, you're still grinding every day if anything it's it's even harder than the season because you know, you're going to doubles, you're going to mornings, you're lifting in the afternoon, practice in the afternoon, and it's every day. And then you go to tournaments in the off season almost every weekend. So off season's really a grind for our guys. Would you say that the off season's almost more difficult than the normal season? I, I think you could definitely argue that, yeah. Um, what about you, Max? How have you been preparing? You know, same thing, practicing doubles, sometimes triples, uh, lifting uh, after school, all that. And I also say that the tournament aspect of the off season is really big. Like you're competing against kids out of state and some of these kids are nationally ranked. So I feel like off season you compete with better competition. So you're gonna lose, you're supposed mm -hmm. to lose in the off season. All right, so when we come back from the break, we're going to meet um, other members of our boys wrestling squad as well as some coaches. And yeah, thanks for joining us today. Hey boss. Okay. I said I'm fine. Welcome back to the Husky Huddle powered by Jets Pizza. Joining us now in the studio is Rodrigo Arceo and Riddick Variano. All right, guys, how are we doing today? Very good, hi. All right, so the season's starting, obviously, in a couple days. Uh, what are you guys' goal for the season? We'll start with you, Rodrigo. Um, definitely, I definitely think I could place this year. And by, by place, you mean be on the podium in state this year? Mm. And that's your goal. What about you, Riddick? My goal is get downstate, but yeah, I think I could play. So. And last season, how did you guys perform? Did you guys get downstate, fall just short? Uh, last year, I went downstate. Um, well, my constellation match, go to the blood round, I kind of ended up selling a lead that I was the last, like, last 30 seconds. So. Riddick? Last year, you know, battling to get in the lineup. We had a bunch of uh, good guys, lighter weights, so got to find a spot. Um, last year, you guys had two state podium finishers. Uh, do you think you'll be able to replicate that performance from last year? And with and if so, then who? Um, I definitely think we could have four to four or five placers. I think a lot of our seniors, like Max, Riddick, me, um, Lehman, um, I might be missing Frankie. Um, I might be missing some other guys. I definitely think we could place. Riddick? Yeah, I agree, you know, a bunch of guys that could place. A bunch of guys that could place this year. So who were your big senior losses last year, and how will you look to replace those roles? So start with you, Riddick. Um, we lost um, some big leaders on the team, like Anthony Cambria, uh, Ben Air Harbor. They were uh, definitely uh, very big guys. Um, led the team, got everybody uh, out of their seats, uh, getting to practice. Um, you know, just focused, kept everybody focused. And who do you think will fill up, fill in those leadership roles? I think uh, me and Max, me and Max, Frankie Tago, we got to step up as leaders, keep everybody on track. Yeah. 
Rodrigo, who um, were some of those big losses? I think we definitely lost like a lot of talent. Like uh, we had this kid named Abdullah, and he went like he was almost like a guaranteed win against like anybody. Um, same with uh, Jake Hansen. Like when those two went on the mat, like he'd be pretty confident they were gonna win. So. Where do you guys stand in the MSL? Are you guys leaders of the pack? Are you guys kind of lower down? Uh, I definitely think it's like between us and Barrington and pretty pretty much all of the schools are not. So what are your goals this season in conference? I mean, how many MSL conference champions did you have last year? Do you hope to get more or less in next year? I'm not sure how many we had last year, but we had a lot of guys in the finals. I think most of almost most of our guys were in the finals last year. Um, I definitely think it's going to be close between us and Barrington this year, though, to see who wins. Same so. for you, Riddick. You yeah. I think it's going to be close between you guys. So wrestling is an individual and a team sport in its ways. In what ways is it a team sport, an individual sport? Start with you, Riddick. Um, it's, it's really uh, it's, it's a lot of individual stuff because it's, it's you versus another person, and uh, nobody else is wrestling for you. But it's it's a lot of team sport in a way where – you're gonna be in a dual meet where you have to wrestle somebody better than you. You're probably gonna lose. You gotta you gotta do things for the team, like not give up as many points, and um, you gotta you gotta learn how to progress through tournaments, keep getting points in tournaments for the team. So there's there's a lot of team part to it. Rodrigo. Well, like for example, you're not always gonna get what you want. Like if you're on a team, you might not go the way you want to go, or and so on. Um. So what do you guys have to improve on as an individual for next season? Um, Start with you, Roger. Me personally, I think it's just like making sure my gas tank is okay because I think I could pretty, I like I've been in a lot of matches where I get up on leads and stuff and then I end up fading away towards the last period. I need to like, make sure I'm conditioning, like getting extra runs and stuff, extra practice. Really? Uh, probably uh, clean up some technique and uh, – Make sure we're wrestling through every position, and um, obviously, cardio, get in shape. But yeah. So you know, obviously, you guys have stressed that it's an individual sport in a lot of ways, but also a team sport. Because it's kind of more of an individual sport, how has your team chemistry, team bonding been throughout last season? As and you hope will continue into this season. We'll start with you, Riddick. Pretty good. I mean, we go on a lot of trips out of the state for wrestling, so we, we have to. Uh, work together as a team, keep things uh, organized, make sure everybody's focused. So yeah, there's a lot of team bonding. We go places together, so. Rodrigo? Well, I think a lot of us are definitely friends, but like when it's time for like a wrestle offs and like not everybody's gonna get go the way they wanna go or and then some people might not even make the team, so it's competitive. What are some of your pre-meet rituals that you guys do before you head out there? Start with you, Rodrigo. Oh, uh, for me, I just I just like to be present. Like I don't even like to listen to music. Like four matches before, I don't even like to warm up too much. I feel like when I like when I warm up too much, I just end up like hyping myself up too much. I just like when I go out there, like the guy moves, the guy moves, and I feel like when I'm not putting like expectations to get a takedown the first thirty seconds or twenty seconds, I wrestle better. Uh, Riddick, I like to uh, get a good warm up, drink some water and uh, probably listen to some music and just, you know, think in my head, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do when I step out on the mat? All right, and uh, your off season, your other teammates expressed that the off season is almost more work than this current, than the, than the real season. Mm -hmm. What have you guys been doing in the off season to really prep yourself for this year? Sorry with you, Riddick. Uh, going to practice every day. I mean, you can't take days off because it's just nobody else is taking days off. So. Yeah, you just got to get to practice every day, work hard every day, get a little bit better each time. All right. Well, unfortunately, we just ran out of time here. We'd like to thank Riddick and Rodrigo for joining us. When we come back from break, we're going to meet the head coach of the boys wrestling team. See you right there. Wait. Use the shovel and bucket of water, remember? Drown, stir, drown, feel. Then make sure it's cool. Where'd you learn that? Smokeyberry.com. Brushed up on some tips before we left. Don't want to start a wildfire, right? <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to the Husky Huddle powered by Jets Pizza. 
In the studio with me now is Coach Rupp from Hersey Boys Wrestling. How are you doing today, Coach Rupp? Thanks. Thanks for having us. No, no problem. So, as a coach, what are your goals for this season? So we we've got a couple different kind of goals. Like first, we have a team goal. Like we're as a program, we've been battling to place at the state meet as a team. Like to me, that would be a really big deal. We've been we've been close. We, we're, we're getting closer and closer. So that's really a huge goal of mine and. and trying to relate that to the kids as individuals. Like, yeah, like I heard you guys talking earlier, like we want to get as many guys down to the state meet as we can place as many guys as we can. Like maybe their, their route is to be a state qualifier and that's their window state placers. Like that's where a good program in my opinion is like getting state placers down there, but also as a team aspect of it's not an easy thing to have both. Like there's been great individuals around this community that have been, you know, state champs, and then their teams aren't very good. Like, there's a balance to have both. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's some sacrifice that needs to be made. So, like, that's a huge thing for us. It's like my major thing is what I'm going to try to tell the kids is we're trying to uh, – we need that state medal as a team. Yeah. Like, we need to place as a team. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. Yeah, because it's as much as an individual sport, it's so much more Yeah, team it's sport. true. Like, people think wrestling is just all individual, and it is, no question. And I want to celebrate our individuals. Like, they are individual entities. But – Getting a team together and getting 14, 20 guys together that are all thinking the same way, it's not the easiest thing. There's selfishness that creeps in. Like, there's a lot of different issues and distractions that happen to a team, and that's why everybody doesn't play. As close as we got is when we went to the Elite Eight, and, you know, we got over the hump there, and it's a big deal right now. And they, they don't know it yet, but that's, that's kind of yeah. where we're going. So you guys obviously lost a lot of seniors last year. Who were some of those big senior losses? You know, I, I consider all those seniors in the same principle as me. Like, they were selfless kids. Like, they did their best they can. We had some definitely had some team issues going on. Like, can't have any distractions whatsoever when you're trying to do things like that, like we're, what we're trying to do. Like, we're not just trying to be, like, an average program at all. Like, we're trying to be an elite program, a top five program every single year in the state of Illinois. And with that comes a lot of – a lot of issues you know and kids are doing a good job they're they're uh they're doing a lot of off-season stuff this is the best off-season production we've had These kids are working they're grinding like we appreciate what they're doing what they're doing is ridiculous it's not hard i mean it's not easy i'm saying it's the sacrifice them and the families are making is crazy so because of that off-season work you think that we're ready to fill in those roles that we're, we're losing this year absolutely like we're just every single year that we, we should never be bad yeah. We, we really shouldn't like the, with the work these kids are doing it's just a new crop of kids that are coming in and we should be getting better every single mm -hmm. year and i think we are growing as a program every single year of course you have better individuals sometimes but as a team I, I like this team i like the chemistry and the makeup of this team we have issues too just like any team would but i, I like the i like the makeup of this team what are some of the mental battles that face that player wrestlers face throughout the course oh, of the year. Oh, it's the off season. Like what they do is crazy. All their friends are out doing nothing, right? right? Like yeah. they're just doing whatever they want, hanging out, doing whatever, going here, going there. You know, who knows high school, dating, going to see people, whatever. And these guys are going to practice. Like mm -hmm. it's not easy what they yeah. do. And I, I know I appreciate what they do. And I think it's a really selfless job. Like go, going to practice every single day and go and then for two hours of mental fatigue, physical fatigue like it's not easy and, and sometimes kids like cave in from it you know so it's tough and it's it's very similar to life like there's no difference so what's your role as a coach in you know trying to combat that my role toughness? is just support them the best i can like make sure they're doing the right things making sure they're staying on track like make sure their grades are good put the best coaches i can if i've hired two of the best coaches in the, in the state of illinois in my opinion on the staff this year uh, both former state champs like, I'm trying to surround these kids with just winners, like guys who have done it and win. So when the kids look at them, they're not like, oh, they've done it. Like, that's a huge difference to me. Like, credit, instant credibility, and they need to be great teachers and great people, you know, to be in our program. So that's where we're at right now. We're in a good spot. But like I said, we've done nothing. Until we get that state trophy, in my opinion, eventually we're going to be talking about team state championship. You know, it was cool to hear one of our kids talking about individual state champ. Like, that's where we're going. What is your goals to improve as a coach for next season? I'm saying just remain more organized. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. Like there's a lot of things. There's a lot of parent phone calls coming in. There's a lot of individual things with kids. Like just getting my rest and staying focused. Like, you know, being present when, when I'm there. 
I need to improve that the most. But I just got to take care of myself during the season, meaning like when it's time to get some rest, it's time to get some rest. Because like if you're into this thing, like this, this it's a physical grind for the, mm -hmm. for the coach as well. Like those guys, of course, wrestling, these guys are out of their minds grinding. But as a coach that actually cares, like it, it's tough. It's tough, tough on my family, away from my kids. Like you got to make sac I have to make sacrifices too. I need to be at everything. Yeah, it's definitely an intense sport for not only the players but for everybody involved with it. Through well, I think any sport, like uh -huh. you're trying to just be, a, you're just trying to win at a high level. That's it. Or I could just be an average coach and mm -hmm. go about my business, collect my check, and whatever happens, happens. Who cares? Because I'm coming back next year. But I'm not rolling that way, and that's that's not me. All right, changing it up a little bit. What are some pre-meet rituals that you have before you get out there and coach? I don't even know. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to take care of the kids. Like, I'll walk back and forth. Like, I have nothing to do with it, right? Like, I try to say the right thing, tell them the right thing, and support them. Every kid's different. Every, every kid needs a different kind of conversation before a match. Like, some kids you got to step on. Some kids, they don't respond to that. So it's 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 a, it's a double-edged sword. Like, I got to manage the coaches. I got to manage the parents. I got to manage the kids. Like, it's a lot. All right. Well, thank you, Coach Rupp, for joining us today. Uh, we're going to head off to break now. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you didn't even turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you got to get it trending. No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. All right, that's it for today's show. We'd like to thank our Hersey Boys Wrestling team for joining us on the Husky Huddle powered by Jets Pizza. For now, I'm Ryan Antonucci. We thank you for joining us.